all chemical reactions involve changes in energy. Sometimes a reaction absorbs energy, and so that's endothermic. Sometimes it releases it, and so that's exothermic. The picture on the left is showing an endothermic reaction, and the one on the right is exothermic. Given a chemical equation, remember that exothermic, you have energy as a product, while if energy is a reactant, it's endothermic. This is an energy diagram, and you'll need to be able to answer questions like the ones you're about to see. The energy of reactants is simply the total potential energy of all the reactants in the reaction. So it's always reactants on the left and products on the right. So the reactants have a potential energy, if you look at it, of 150. You would need units on your answer. So if you look at the graph, it's in kilocalories. Or kilocalories per mole. The energy of the products, simply follow the line over, and the products are at 50 kilocalories per mole. So that's the potential energy of the products. Activation energy is the energy that has to be overcome for the reaction to take place. Reactants don't just become products. They have to have the required activation energy. And that's measured from where you start to the top of the hill. Which is the transition state. So to measure the activation energy, we start at 150 and we've got to make it all the way up to 450. So subtracting 450 minus 150, we have an activation energy of 300 kilocalories per mole. For the reverse reaction, remember to measure activation energy. It's where you start to the top of the transition state. So we're starting at the products in the reverse reaction. And we've still got to get it up to that 450 kilocal mark. But this time we're starting at 50. So the difference between 450 and 50 is 400. Delta H is simply the difference in where you start to where you end, or the difference in potential energy of the reactants and products. So energy of reaction is simply delta H. So 150 to 50 is a difference of 100. For the reverse is also 50 to 150. Notice the same amount forward and reverse. The difference though is one of these should have a positive delta H, one should be negative. In the forward reaction, I start at 150 and I end at 50, so that means I've lost energy. So the forward reaction should be a negative 100 kilocalories, and the reverse, I gain 100, so that's why it's a positive 100 kilocalories. So delta H's sign should always be opposite for the forward and reverse. If you notice, we lost energy going in the forward direction. If we lose energy, that's exothermic. Exothermic should always have a negative delta H. If the picture looked like this, then we would have gained energy in the forward reaction which means endothermic. So given a graph or an energy diagram, just looking at it, you should be able to tell if it's endo or exothermic. Go ahead and pause the video and answer these questions on your own. Restart when you think you have it.
So we want the activation energy, which remember was measured from starting to top of the hill, or the activated complex, and forward reaction. So we're starting at 100, and we need to make it up to 400. So that's a difference of 300, or represented by A. What letter represents delta H? If it doesn't specify, it's always the forward reaction. And delta H is from where you start to where you end. Starting here, ending over there, and so that's going to be a difference of C. The value of the delta H or C, we start at 100, we end at 300, so that's 200. And should that be positive or negative? If you said positive, you are correct, because we gained 200, whatever unit we're in, of energy. The reverse reaction is also going to be 200, but we lose 200 because we go from 300 to 100. So that should be a negative 200. And again, if it doesn't specify, it's always forward reaction. So is this reaction endo or exo? And it's an endothermic reaction because the forward reaction is endothermic because we gained energy. Go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own. Restarting when you think you have it. Okay, so we're looking for the potential energy of the reactants which is where we started, you should have got an 80. Potential energy of the products, where you're ending, you should have gotten 160. And all of these are kilojoules. The activation energy from where you start to the top is 240 minus 80. giving you 160. Delta H, difference of where you start to where you end, is a difference of 80. The forward reaction, we gain energy because we go from 80 to 160, so that's going to be endothermic. And it makes number 4 a positive 80 kilojoules. For the reverse reaction, we'll be starting on the right at the products, and we'll be going to the top of the hill. So that's 240 minus 160. And 240 minus 160 is 80. Delta H is still 80 from before, 160 minus 80. But this time we go from 160 to 80, that means we lost 80 kilojoules. So the reverse reaction is exothermic. 